Howdy folks, this is Fuzzy Road to Health and I'm Fuzzy D, aka David. <laughs> so uh, I got back from the big keto con. I was down in Austin, Texas for about a week. I went down a few days uh, before the conference. Um, actually, they renamed it. it was, um, officially, it's called Hack Your Health. Uh, it's basically KetoCon 2024. Uh, going forward, it's going to be called Hack Your Health. And actually, next year, they're moving it. Uh, it has been in Austin for quite a few years, but... They're going to be moving it to Tampa Bay, Florida, and it's going to be in September instead of June. So I'm hoping I can make it down there for, for that one. Um, now, this, uh, this conference was absolutely incredible. Uh, I met so many very cool people, you know, just having the opportunity to talk to a bunch of other people that are in kind of the same space uh, and frame of mind. And, you know, using uh, proper food choices to change their health. Um, you know, they weren't all carnivores, but there was probably 30% of the people I ran into were carnivore and the rest were keto. And um, they had all kinds of uh, interesting products there. Um, some of them I, I don't think actually are worth spending any money on. Uh, but there were a few products that uh, I really enjoyed. Um, there, there was a booth that had some really good minerals, uh, like uh, liquid mineral mixtures. And uh, I tried taking a, sh a shot of this one type of mineral complex for three days. And uh, it was actually kind of helpful. Um, but it's going to be a little while before we can get it in Canada. So uh, they're working on that. Um, there was another product that I really, really fell in love with called Baja Gold uh salt so it's like a a high mineral content sea salt it's collected from a, a protected bay in uh, mexico in in the baja and um they uh, they test it regularly for uh microplastics and they still haven't found any in it um so they take the water and they they put it out on in in big containers I guess flat containers and um, they they let it uh, crystallize in the sun they don't use any like mechanical processing other than just to break it up and put it in containers and uh, according to the testing that they showed me they've actually got the highest mineral content um, of any of the available commercial salts out there so their mineral content is uh somewhere up about uh, 30 percent if i remember correctly um in uh in the edit i'll uh, i'll pop in a little uh video testimonial that i that i uh shot of one of their guys uh, working at the booth and uh so i'll cut that in right now Hello, everybody. I am Colin with Baja Gold Salt Company. Happy to be here today at Hack Your Health here in Austin, Texas. Um, sharing with you Baja Gold. This is the world's healthiest, uh, most mineral abundant sea salt on the market. Um, it is chock full of all of your macro and trace minerals. We lead the industry with the lowest levels of sodium chloride amongst any other product in the salt category. Um, we have a variety of different offerings in both grain size, bag sizes. We also sell some um, concentrated minerals here uh, for creating um, alkaline water, remineralizing your drinking water, your reverse osmosis, taking it as a daily mineral supplement, as a tincture under your tongue. Uh, very universal product. You can use it in the kitchen. You can uh, keep it in your medicine cabinet as well. Uh, for more information, all of our mineral analysis, technical information, please visit our website at BajaGoldSaltCompany.com. Uh, you can reach out via email, phone, text. Uh, you'll get one of us, likely myself, and we're happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks for checking us out. Perfect.
Okay, as you can see, they're they're pretty convinced they've got a great product, and uh, uh, I had a couple couple of uh, sample tubes from them, and it's absolutely incredible. It's the best tasting salt I've ever used, and I just love it. Um, the only salt that I would use in addition to it going forward once I get a supply is uh, my malt and smoked salt as, as my finishing salt. But for my main salt, I'm going to definitely be switching to Baja Gold. Um, they've got it available uh, right up to 50 pound bags. So being that it's, you know, they still haven't got it into Amazon Canada yet. Uh, when I order it, I'll probably order it in the 25 or 50 pound bags so that I don't have to be uh, worried about, you know, getting it across the border very often and until they've got it at Amazon. Uh, they are working on it. Um, they don't know exactly how long it's going to take before they're set up uh, in the warehouses in Canada. But uh, hopefully that'll be fairly soon. But uh, I hope to be ordering some of that pretty soon. It's uh, definitely a lot tastier than the Himalayan salt I've been using so far. So uh, I guess next um, uh, I'll take you through a little bit of the uh, of my kind of the, some of the people that I met at uh, KetoCon and right at the end I'm going to uh, talk about a couple of pretty valuable things that I learned that I'm going to be implementing for myself that'll hopefully uh, help me with uh, being stuck with my weight loss. So uh, I'm just going to switch over to, uh, I put like a little uh, slideshow thing together just to make it easier on myself to uh, show this stuff to you. So uh, basically this is just like a little uh, trip and conference overview. So here was, I was packed up and getting ready to go to the airport. And uh, this was just, uh, just as we were uh, heading into the airport where I live. And here I was uh, waiting to get on the plane in Calgary. So I'd already uh, flown in. Uh, from city I live in, and uh, so I had a, a kitchenette. Uh, I stayed at the um, uh, Extended Stay America Suites in uh, uh, downtown Lake uh, in Austin, and it was only like about a seven or eight minute walk from the venue, and it was uh, a nice little kitchenette. So uh, the Sunday that I got in, I had a friend of mine. Uh, uh, that I met down there, uh, shout out Jason, and um, he was very kind to, uh, he took me out for some some uh, really good barbecue, oh, what was the name of the place, uh, I think it was uh, Cooper's Barbecue, and uh, had some uh, ribs and some brisket, and I was just kind of so excited to be there that, uh, you know, I forgot to grab a, a selfie with us, I I did get a picture of the uh, of the food, um, so I thought it was, but not until I was almost done eating. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those days. And then later that night, uh, like after the dinner, he took me over to the uh, Whole Foods uh, grocery chain and got some of these wonderful steaks. I mean, these were incredible. I also had like I got a picanha and a bunch of uh, ground beef while I was there. And uh, boy, they cut some nice, beautiful steaks. These are grass-fed, grain-finished, and uh, very tasty and oh, so tender. I definitely enjoyed my meals while I was there. Although, to be honest, um, I got a little carried away, spent a little more than I should have on getting steak. I should have got less steak and more ground beef. But um, man, when I saw those inch and a quarter to inch and a half thick steaks, I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that Whole Foods uh, chain down there. They definitely have really top-notch uh, quality food, you know, non-GMO. They even had, like, grass-fed, grass-finished stuff available, although they really charge for it. So, anyway, uh, let's get on with, uh, got to meet uh, some people in person and make some new friends as well. So, uh, this is Lynn from Midlife Carnivore. Uh, I was one of the first interviews that she did on on her uh, YouTube channel, and 
we really hit it off and uh, I really enjoyed talking with her. And she was one of the first uh, people I met that is a like a fellow YouTuber that that uh, that I know. So uh, we had a, a great chat and I got to meet her husband, whose name is also Dave. And uh, he's a great guy. And uh, yeah, we had a great chat. We I think we chatted for about 45 minutes and uh, we're going to be uh, probably going to be uh, interviewing her uh, for my channel here fairly soon. And, uh, so we'll be, uh, I'll be getting in contact with her here shortly for that. And, uh, here's a couple of people that I met. Um, so over here, um, these two ladies, uh, they were standing around chatting and they looked up and saw me and called out, are you Dave? <laughs> and I was like, kind of stunned. Um, yeah, they're actually fans of the channel. They, um, the, they, they watch my stuff, they're subscribers, and um, I, I was really shocked. I mean, I've just got a small channel, and uh, I was pretty surprised that they uh, that they knew me and wanted to come up and talk to me and take a picture. And um, so uh, the one on the left here is uh, Candace Cooper, very, very nice lady. Uh, really enjoyed talking with her. We actually sat together for a while uh, and watched one of the... Uh, one of the first presentations and I ran into her a couple of times uh, uh, during the conference as well and we stopped and chatted for a minute and this is uh, Adrian Glenhill so she was on one of the biggest loser programs like she was like the winner kind of a thing and uh, she's full carnivore and uh, she's got um, let me see I got a sticker from her uh, let me just pop back to on camera here. So uh, she gave me this sticker, and it's kind of cool. <laughs> and over here we have uh, Audra Coleman. So all things Audra. She uh, she also um, I'm I'm not sure if if she knew me from my YouTube channel or if she knew me from Facebook. I think I, I know we, we did talk a lot on Facebook. I'm not sure if she saw. Um, any of my stuff on uh, uh, on YouTube, but not that it really matters. But uh, very nice lady. Um, she's uh, she's a carnivore as well, I believe. And uh, we had a good chat for about uh, oh, twenty minutes or so. And uh, yeah, she does some pretty interesting stuff. I don't really want to talk about what she does for a living. Um, she didn't really give me permission to do that. And it's kind of a sensitive job, so um, we'll just leave it at that. And then I got to meet uh, Tim Silva from uh, Carnivore Brothers. So Carnivore Brothers, uh, I see them quite a bit uh, on Facebook, and we chat back and forth a little bit on Facebook. And uh, I believe they also watch some of my videos. I know I've seen some of their videos. And uh, very nice fellow. We had a quick little chat. And... Uh, I know his, his brother was around, but uh, I didn't get to meet him formally. Uh, he said his brother had seen me and wanted to talk to me, but we just didn't connect. Um, it was pretty busy. There was a lot of people there. And here I got to uh, meet the Nola Carnivore. And uh, yeah, he's uh, another uh, great carnivore out there. So it was great to be able to meet him and uh, chat for a couple of minutes. And, you know, I, f I forgot to take a selfie with this fellow, but um, uh, this is a MD. He's actually a subscriber on my channel, and he recognized me. I was um, quite shocked when uh, he uh, picked me out of the crowd and uh, called out my name and came and talked to me for uh, a few minutes. And, uh, yeah, he's had a pretty interesting journey as well. And uh, I hope to be uh, connecting with him uh, at some point in the near future and uh, we'll do an interview with him too. And uh, this was a great guy. We really hit it off. Uh, we actually spent oh, probably three or four hours all told during the conference chatting. And, you know, I'm sorry, brother. I forgot your name. If you see this, um, I'm really sorry. 
<laughs> I just had so much stuff going on and I I just forgot to write it down and I lost some of my stuff. I, I think you gave me a card. Um, but uh, yeah, by all means, uh, reach out. Uh, I know you've got my card. So um, yeah, make, make sure you get in touch. So, and my apologies, but great guy. And uh, so I got to meet some of the kind of the bigger name movers and shakers. So I'm sure lots of you know uh, Carrie from Homestead Howe. So he's doing the uh, Healing uh, Humanity uh, documentary. And um, got some really uh, interesting stories that are going to be coming up on that. Uh, I went to a little uh, presentation he was doing about the progress of the movie. And he had a couple of videos from uh, Special for Us from uh, people that are confirmed to be in the movie. Um, so that was uh, pretty nice talking to him. Uh, I've done uh, an interview on his channel. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we hit it off pretty good. He's a great guy. When I walked in the room, he looked up, he saw me, he shouted my name and called me over. And uh, yeah, he's uh, good people. And I got a chance to uh, stop and talk to Dr. Baker. Um, I had actually met him the day before, shook his hand, but I, uh, he was kind of busy and I didn't want to bug him for a picture at that point. But uh, the next day he was at his Rivero booth and uh, waited till he things kind of calmed down a bit and I went and talked to him for a couple of minutes and managed to snag a picture. Great guy, really approachable. And, uh, you know, I, di I didn't want to take up too much of his time. He has so many people trying to talk to him. So we just chatted for a quick minute and then uh, I carried on. And I got a chance to track down uh, Dr. Jaffe and talk to him for a couple minutes. And he actually uh, graciously agreed to uh, do an interview. And and uh, he he uh, may even call me to do a interview on his podcast. Um, don't know if he will or not, for sure. We were just chatting about it a little bit. And uh, I was very grateful that uh, he agreed to do an interview on my channel. So I'm, I'm hoping to do that in uh, sometime, sometime in the next uh, two or three weeks get in touch with him and uh, here is another doctor that um, he had seen me in some of the meetings and you know I talked a bit about my story and he didn't really know me from YouTube or anything but he was intrigued and came up and talked to me for a few minutes and uh, he wants to do an interview and um, I'm and he was agreeable to do an interview on my channel as well. He's got an interesting story. He's a chiropractor and uh, he's also taken some other specialized courses and he deals uh, mostly with uh, uh, people from the uh, VA, uh, so patients with the VA. So he deals with, deals with a lot of people that are going through uh, addiction and uh, PTSD and, uh, you know, mental health issues and stuff. And he, he wanted to talk to me because I, I had mentioned the fact that uh, carnivore has um, healed my bipolar disorder. So he was pretty intrigued with that and wanted to know more. So um, we've, uh, we've already been in touch with a few emails back and forth. So um, hopefully we'll be uh, arranging that interview here for him pretty quick. And uh, here's Dr. Kiltz. I got to actually chat with him for a few minutes. And uh, he is so personable and so interesting. And when you're talking to him, you know, you get the distinct feeling that he really has a keen interest in what you have to say. And, you know, he concentrates on you and he's not getting distracted. He just makes you feel really special when you're talking to him. And... Uh, uh, I've, I've run into a couple other people that have said the same thing about Dr. Kiltz. He's, uh, he's wonderful. And uh, the thing that kind of surprised me, <laughs> I have to admit, you know, on camera, he looks a lot bigger. But uh, um, he was actually uh, fairly short. You can see he's, um, uh, he's you know, he, he's kind of almost in front of the two of us, you know, or, like, you know in between us. But, you know, he's like right there, but he, he's... Uh, you know, physically, he's fairly small, but he's not a small guy, if you know what I mean. Like, personality-wise, and just as a human being, you know, the guy's huge. And uh, he really knows his stuff. Um, Dr. Kilt is a fertility specialist. 
uh, and, and he uses carnivore and keto to uh, help a lot of his patients that have otherwise never been able to uh, to get pregnant. So, yeah, and he uh, he talks quite a bit about uh, about carnivore and the health benefits and uh, healing autoimmune and stuff like that as well. So it was absolutely great to, to meet Dr. Kiltz. And this fellow on the left, I didn't put a label on there, but this is actually uh, uh, Dave. This is uh, the husband of uh, Midlife Carnivore. Great guy, really enjoyed talking to him. He's uh, pretty funny, actually. He's got a good sense of humor. And actually, so did Dr. Kiltz, for that matter. But uh, And uh, so, you know, uh, we went... You know, there was three days of conference and learned all kinds of incredible stuff, uh, lots of great presentations, and uh, then I had to come home. So this is just a few pics uh, on my trip home. So here I was on the plane leaving Austin. So this is a, a um, oh, uh, an Airbus A320. It's a really big plane, but... The seating was by far the most cramped of any of the planes that I was on. Although this was one that I, I couldn't get the um, extended leg room seating when I was booking my flights. They didn't have any left on this flight. And uh, the, actually the only ones that they had with extended leg room were like the business class ones. And they, not only did they not have any left, but they were really expensive. So um, this was a pretty uncomfortable flight for me. <laughs> but luckily it was... It was only about three hours from uh, Austin to LAX, and uh, so this was just the uh, this, the the gate, the departure gate at uh, LAX. Uh, but the, that airport is huge, and uh, now because of um, you know I've been doing so much walking at the conference. You know I was probably getting in five or six kilometers a day in walking, but. Once I had all my luggage in tow and, you know, the accumulation of the the um, pretty uncomfortable hotel room bed and uh, hauling the luggage and that very cramped flight from Austin, I was in a fair amount of pain. So um, I had already had, just in case I needed it, I had, I had booked uh, a wheelchair ride. So uh, I was able to make use of that when I got to LAX. I had to walk a ways to get to where they had them, but... Then uh, I was able to get a ride from there. And the nice thing about that is they breezed me through security. I was able to bypass all of the lines. So, which is something I really needed. I don't think I could have made it if I was standing in line. It was just so many people. The lines were so long. So, um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I got to say, you know, the security screening um, wasn't as painful as I was expecting. Um Although at LAX, I did get frisked <laughs> right after the, I went through the scanner. Um, they decided they, they wanted to frisk me, which, which is fine. It didn't bother me any. They asked me if I wanted to go to a little private room, and I was like, ah, nah, I'm not shy. Just go ahead. <laughs> so they frisked me out in front of God and everyone, but uh, it was nothing. No big deal. So, and uh, off I went. So, uh and then uh, the next one there is uh, a shot of me on the on the plane leaving from Calgary. So that was another 737, and uh, had uh, lots of leg room there. So that was nice. It cost me a little extra, but um, it was definitely worth worth the money. And uh, it's kind of funny on on the very first flight uh, from where I lived to Calgary, I made the mistake of picking a window seat, and um, Okay, I won't make that mistake again. Um, my shoulders are so wide that, and the curve, and I'm so tall, and the curvature of the fuselage, I was just, you know, kind of leaned over at a pretty bad angle, and then the flight got delayed leaving. Uh, we were about an hour and ten minutes. Uh, they had some kind of a maintenance issue. They told us something else, but I saw the maintenance people on the ground. Uh, swarming around the plane so yeah, it was some kind of a maintenance issue they had to take care of before we took off so um that got us into calgary late and so it was a little bit of more of a scramble and i was actually in a lot of pain when we got off the wheelchair there or off the uh, airplane there so i wound up 
asking for uh, for a wheelchair. I had to wait for a while, but that was fine. I kind of needed to rest, stretch out in a big chair. <laughs> so, um, and they, uh, so they, they got me a, a wheelchair ride and I was able to uh, make my plane. So that was very nice of them. So I want to give a really big shout out to the staff at both the uh, Calgary Airport and LAX. Uh, they were really good about uh, um, handling things with the, uh, with a wheelchair ride and uh they were definitely uh i think they're pretty unappreciated in, in general they were kind of surprised when i took a moment to uh, thank them very much for what they were doing and tell them how much i appreciated their work and uh you know they, <laughs> the one lady especially was kind of embarrassed but uh i i just i just felt like they they really needed to know that people appreciate what they do so yeah uh, took a moment to do that and my wife got a picture of me uh coming through the gate uh at the airport at home and uh it was definitely nice to get home sleep in my own bed and uh i didn't do too much yesterday i was still recovering i was in a lot of pain um actually had a fair bit of swelling in my joints and stuff from the trip so that, uh, I must have been retaining a lot of water because between yesterday and today, I lost like four and a half pounds. So, <laughs> and, you know, got to be happy about that. So uh, a couple things that I learned that uh, really stuck out to me. I mean, I learned lots of stuff and I took lots of notes and I signed up for the, uh, like I paid a little extra for, for the replays. They recorded all the sessions. So um, once they release those in about a month, I'll be going through them with a fine tooth comb. I'll be making lots of notes and doing major updates on my website, adding a bunch of information that uh, will still be available for free, just just like it always has been. So um, basically, the the first thing I wanted to talk about is the fact you know I, many of you know that I've been stuck uh, losing weight. Uh, you know, I've been just kind of hovering for the last few months go down a little bit and back up a little bit and down a little bit. You know, even with all the walking and stuff that I do, you know, I'm still just kind of stuck. And I've got a couple of friends, uh, one of them local, that's having a similar issue. And um, it turns out, uh, I, I attended this one one talk on, on the science of metabolic health. And uh, he, was, he was talking about this specific issue. And... Apparently, it, there's a common mistake when people get stuck. They, you know, they, they see all the videos on YouTube, and, and I'm guilty of this as well. And those videos tell you that if you eat more fat, it helps your body burn more fat. And now, when you're first starting out and your body's not used to it, the, it's true. But once your body is kind of adjusted and fat adapted, it's no longer accurate. So... Um, it turns out that uh, this is mm, a, likely a big part of the problem is the amount of dietary fat because I keep maintaining that, you know, 30% by volume level of fat. And uh, apparently that's a problem. So um, the solution is basically, um, you know, <laughs> use less fat. Uh, start trimming some of the fat if you need to. Uh, somewhere between 15 and 20 percent is is what we want if we're stuck and what this does is it forces the body to use internal fat stores because the body requires fat to digest animal protein now well, whether it's in the form of red meat or eggs or fish or whatever but it it still needs the fat to digest the meat and it can use two sources of fat it can use your dietary fat and it can use your own fat your adip adipose tissue and if you uh, provide it less dietary fat, and then it will use more of your body fat, which, you know, the, the way he explained it made it so simple. I don't know why I'd, I didn't see this before, but, um, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, I put a lot of faith in what I was seeing on YouTube and, you know, in, in a certain context, they were right. But um, in another context, they, they were not correct. So, um this is, uh, you know, this is really valuable information for me. So, um, Donna, if you're watching, um, 
this may be the issue that you're having because I know you use a fair amount of fat with your food. And uh, so this might be the solution as well as this next thing. So an additional step is to add prolonged fasting. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. So um, there's a couple of places I got information on this. One is uh, Dr. Boz had a booth. Now, I didn't catch Dr. Boz. She was there uh, at the venue. She did a presentation, but um, uh, I didn't catch her at her booth. But I did talk to one of her associates. And they've got this club that they're doing. And they basically do these 72-hour fasts uh, at the beginning of the week. And then they do it eight weeks in a row. And uh, that that's something I'm going to try. So... Um, now I saw another, um, presentation on fasting specifically on prolonged fasting, and he had some really interesting information. So, uh, now what he taught is that dry fasting, which means you don't drink any fluids at all and you don't eat anything. You're just completely dry, no food, no water, no nothing. But you can't just start doing it. You, you have to kind of prepare your body. So let me just say that up front. Don't just jump in and try dry fasting. But apparently it's three times more effective. Like one day of dry fasting is equivalent to three days of water fasting. So, uh, but your body has to be kind of prepped for it. Now, I already uh, generally eat two meals a day, so my body's a little bit used to intermittent fasting, and I have done OMAD in the past, or one meal a day. So, I can probably jump into it a little faster than most people, but I'm still not going to jump right in. So, uh, my plan of attack going forward is I'm going to reduce my fat to 15 to 20% by volume, and I'm going to uh, start with uh, water fasting. So I'll do three cycles uh, spaced a week apart of 72 hour water fast. And then on week four, I'll switch to a 24 hour dry fast. And uh, so I'll have a total of eight weeks of fasting. So the first three will be 72 hour water fast and then the last five will be 24 hour dry fast. And uh, we'll see how that goes. And I'll, you know, I'll definitely re report back and see if this breaks my uh, being stuck on weight loss. Because I really want to get the last, you know, 70, 80 pounds off so that I can get my skin surgery and uh, get rid of all that hanging skin that I'm always dealing with fungal infections on. So uh, if you're curious about that, there is a, a video on my channel. If I remember, I'll, I'll try and... Uh, link it on the end end screen so that you guys can catch that one if you're dealing with these kind of issues with extreme weight loss. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've lost about 220 pounds. So I've got all this hanging skin. And um, if you go to uh, if you go to my website, I've got information on there on how to make uh, how to make your own cream uh, to uh, to fight the fungal infections works better than any prescription I've gotten from the doctor. So, um, it's a pretty easy recipe and, uh, um, just, uh, I've got, you know, a ton of great information on the website and then there's links to all my other social media stuff, including YouTube channel. Although if you're watching this, you're already on the YouTube channel, but, um, just give me a quick second here and I will grab the link for my website. So there's the uh, the uh, address for my website. So uh, I've got uh, just a ton of great information on there already. So make sure you check that out. And like I said, uh, as I get access to those uh, replays from the conference, then I'll definitely be doing some significant updating and additions to the website. There was some just fantastic information there. So that's uh that's kind of where we're at um i'm gonna uh not be doing too many videos right away i've got a little bit of other work to catch up on but uh my next video i do want to do uh one of those videos on um uh, rapid pain management 
that I've been promising. So where I'll show you step by step how to how to do it. We'll cover a couple of different ones. And uh, one is just for basic uh, rapid uh, pain elimination. And another one is for dealing with pain that's rooted in unresolved emotional trauma. A lot of people don't realize that pain, physical pain can come from this unresolved childhood trauma. So uh, I've got a specific uh, exercise that you can do to, uh, you know, identify kind of where that emotion's coming from and then and then deal with it. So uh, very valuable tool. I've, uh, I've helped a couple of clients uh, uh, with that exact issue and they find it very helpful and uh, so far their their pain hasn't come back once we dealt with it in this manner so um, I had ho actually hoped before KetoCon I had hoped to uh, go down and take more advanced training in this field but uh, things just didn't work out so I'm hoping I can maybe do that uh, next spring or possibly next summer we'll just see how that works out but uh, in any case, um, thank you all for coming. Uh, you know, without you, this channel doesn't exist. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, if you feel I've earned it, please take a moment to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our future videos coming out. And we will see you on the next video, folks. Thank you very much.